my fellow financial analysts. Dr. E here, sitting at my desk uh, in the classroom, not my office. You can see me, hello. And uh, so I want to go over case six participation questions. Case six, the lazy mower. Question one, what is the point of capital budgeting? Well, capital is long-term assets, long-term financing, and budgeting is understanding um, how much money is coming in and how much money is going out. So capital budgeting is uh, understanding how to reinvest in your business, okay? And you reinvest in property plant equipment, you reinvest in people, you reinvest uh, in research and development, um, I'm sure I'm, I'm leaving out some things, but the point is that you have to reinvest in your business. And the, the decisions that you make about reinvesting should be based on the returns that you expect from the reinvestment. I understand that in life uh, there are things that are uh, more important than money. Um, my dad used to say, money cannot buy happiness, but money gives you options. And um, so we have to have some medium of exchange in order to uh, have the necessities uh, that we need in life and, in, and the comforts that we want to have uh, in this life. And in capitalism, we choose how we're going to spend our money based on the returns. And in business, it is the financial returns that should drive uh, how we spend our money. So that is the point of capital budgeting. Sh what, how should we reinvest our money? What should we spend our money on? And how much of our money should we spend on those things? And it's all based on returns. What are three things, question two, a good capital budgeting technique should provide to a user? All right. So um, we need to understand um, how much money uh, our investment is going to cost us, cash outflows, and we need to know how much money our investment should bring in, cash inflows. We need to understand the timing of the money that goes out and the money that comes in and we need to understand the time value of money. We need to understand what our minimum rate of return, acceptable rate of return should be, okay? And we need to know the net amount that an investment is gonna bring uh, in, uh, meaning cash, infl cash outflows subtracted from cash inflows, and we, that needs to be presented on a time value or a present value basis. In other words, if we were to spend the money today and receive the money today, what would our net look like? How much value are we creating? It is the purpose of business to create value and value is created by, um, cre by uh, putting together, developing a sustainable stream of positive cash flow. All right, question three. On page 61, we are told that a detailed feasibility report must be put together. Let's say this report takes up to $100,000 of man hours. How do we account for this in our assessment of this project? Um, this is a sunk cost. Um, if we put our feasibility study together and we find that uh, we should go ahead with the project, we're not going to get our money back. On the, uh, in terms of the money that we spent on the feasibility report. If we just determine that we should not go ahead with the project, we're not going to get our money back. That's what's called a sunk cost. It is money that is spent that we're not going to get back. Therefore, as we are analyzing a project, a potential investment, the cost of the analysis is not included in the decision 
as to whether to go ahead with the project. So you ignore the $100,000. Um, and there are other things that you ignore, uh, and um, I think, uh, and one of them is question six in, in the, um, in, in the uh, case. All right, we'll, so we'll get to some other costs that um, are not included. Since the company has a plant, well, here's another one. Since the company has a plant that is not being used and that is fully paid for and depreciated, shouldn't they assume they do not have any cost associated with using the plant? The plant has been purchased. It is just sitting there. It's fully depreciated. It's paid for. It's just sitting there. So if we move in there, we shouldn't have a cost associated with it. Wrong again. We have an opportunity cost. There is a plant sitting there that we could sell or lease to someone else for cash flow. The fact that that plant is sitting there idle, that, that's a mistake that management has made. There, so you, uh, it's a mistake because they could have sold it or leased it. They could be generating cash flow from that asset and they had not done it. So the way you treat idle space is you use the market value of the space, the cash flow that you could be getting if you sold that space or if you leased that space. There is still a cost. Question five. The marketing team is a little concerned that the new product will cannibalize sales of the company's high-end mower. That means some people will choose to buy the new product instead of buying the high-end mower. What is this called? You could say it's called cannibalization, but in finance terms we would call this a spillover or side effect. Okay? Do we need to include any impact and the answer to that is absolutely. If we decide to do this project, how might this project impact cash flows? It's called incremental cash flows. You include costs and revenues that are incremental, that will change if we do the project. If so, what would we need to include? Well, what we're talking about is cash inflows and cash outflows. And we have to calculate those cash inflows and outflows on an after-tax basis, okay, and then find the present value of those cash flows. So, let's say that um, by introducing this new product, uh, let's say 10% of sales of the existing product line would go away. So that is a negative spillover, okay? And um, so we would have to deduct that amount from the cash flows that are being brought in by the new mower. So the, let's say the new mower brings in a million dollars of sales, but let's say the old product had a million dollars of sales, but $100,000 of sales from the old product are canceled because they're in the new product. Well, then you have to deduct the million dollars. Now, do you deduct the million dollars of sales? No, you don't. What do you deduct? Well, you deduct the million dollars of gross profit from the sales that are canceled. Okay? No, not the revenue but really the gross profit uh, from the sales uh, that, that are canceled, okay? Um, seems like there was one other thing I wanted to, to add to that, but, but uh, so, no, there could be a positive side effect. That's what I was thinking about. Let's say that with the lawnmower, let's say that there's a grass catcher or a bag that attaches to the lawnmower, and let's say that that bag is not sold with any of your lawnmowers, let's say it's an accessory, and that the accessory 
uh, fits to the new product. And let's say that um, by selling the new product, a million dollars worth of the new product, you also generate sales of $100,000 worth of the, gra the grass catcher bag. Okay? So you would have to add the $100,000 from the sale of the, of the bag into this project. Okay? Because doing this project affects the cash flows both positively and negatively. Okay? So uh, that's a quick uh, uh, primer on uh, capital budgeting and we'll take a, a, a brief break and we'll come back and tackle question number one. Peace out. Shalom.